everyone. As you know, I am Deepshika Kaur. I am a teacher by profession. Do you think that your digestive tract is all about chewing, swallowing, churning and expelling? Then your body begs to differ. Let's talk about human digestive system today. Five processes that take place during digestion are ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ejection. This is the diagram of human digestive system. We will see this in detail in the coming slides. First thing that we are studying is salivary gland that is present in our buccal cavity or if you say mouth. Apart from teeth and tongue we have salivary glands. These are the salivary glands on one side and similar kind of salivary glands are present on the other side of your mouth. Salivary gland is responsible for the secretion of saliva which is the which is contain which contains salivary amylase which helps in the breakdown of carbohydrates or complex carbohydrates like starch into simpler carbohydrates like glucose. Next is teeth. Teeth are four types. Are of four types in our mouth: incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. Incisors are responsible for cutting the food food into smaller bits. Canines are called tearing teeth that are responsible for tearing the flesh or the meat if you eat. Then we have three molars that are used for crushing the food. And then lastly we have molars that are responsible for grinding and crushing the food further. Apart from that we have tongue in our mouth. Tongue is responsible for speaking, of course, but it is also responsible for chewing and swallowing the food. It is responsible for tasting the food. It is also responsible for the secretion of saliva and then mixing the food into the saliva. It also tells us about our health. The color of the tongue can give us some hints of about, about our health. After the buccal cavity, the food goes through the esophagus into the stomach. This is how the food is taken in the esophagus. Esophagus has a muscular inner lining which undergoes contraction and relaxation which helps it to hold the food right from your buccal cavity to the stomach. This movement is called peristalsis. Peristalsis is going on throughout your gut means you right from your mouth till the anus the whole tubular structure the alimentary canal undergoes peristaltic movement. The peristaltic movement in the esophagus is responsible for taking food from the buccal cavity to the stomach. This is stomach. Stomach is responsible for the secretion of HCL, some mucus and some enzymes. HCL that is secreted which is called hydrochloric acid is responsible for killing the bacteria and the germs that enter the food, enter the, uh, your gut along with the food. The enzyme that works on the digestion of proteins in the stomach needs acidic medium. The buccal cavity was having basic medium because the saliva that, that was secreted was basic in nature. Now here in stomach the medium changes from basic to acidic because of the hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid can lead to the ulceration formation in our stomach but this is prevented because of a natural secretion of mucus in the inner lining of the stomach. If this lining is not thick enough then our stomach is very much going to get digested by the enzymes that are present in our stomach. So it is the grace of this mucus that helps uh, not that helps not getting digested. The stomach not getting digested means self self suicidal thing not happening. Then acid which is present in the stomach along with the enzyme which is pepsin together make gastric juice and which is responsible for chemical breakdown of complex proteins. Along with that another thing that goes on in stomach is the muscular contraction. As I told you in esophagus peristalsis is taking place same way in stomach also peristalsis take place which is called as churning. Churning is leading to mechanical breakdown of the food again. You will say mechanical breakdown had already taken place in our mouth by chewing. But still further, some mechanical breakdown is required which is done by stomach with churning. Then after the churning, the food is sent to the small intestine where the first gland which is liver, which is the largest gland of our body, 
is going to secrete some bile juice and will get stored in this bile uh, in this gallbladder. Uh, uh, Liver, when produces bile juice, is responsible for emulsification of fat. Consider this as a big fat molecule, globule, and this bile juice works on it this way that it changes it to the smaller forms of water, uh, small, smaller globules, which can further be digested easily by the release of some enzymes from pancreas. So, this was stomach, the food came into the stomach through esophagus, then it goes into the small intestine, this U-shaped structure is small intestine, in which the secretion of liver is going to come. The secretion of liver first go and gets stored in gallbladder, and from gallbladder it comes into the duodenum, which is small intestine. Along with that is the pancreas, which is just below the stomach, and pancreas is also going to secrete some juices. Gallbladder is responsible for the storage of bile juice and not the secretion of bile juice. This the gallbladder sometimes also have some problem of having stones. Stones are not coming from anywhere or from your food at all. The stones are being formed because of the concentration of the bile juice that is secreted in the liver. The crystallization of that concentrated bile juice leads to the formation of stone and then stone can be painful and the, the way of treating it is that the gallbladder is removed from the body of the patient. Let me explain your emulsifications once emulsification once again. If this is a big globule of fat, the bile juice or bile salt that is present in the bile juice is going to go and attack onto the this. And this will change into small, small globules with the uh, bile salt attached to it. After that is the pancreas. This was stomach. The liver has given the secretion into gallbladder. Gallbladder has given the secretion into the duodenum, which is a small intestine. Along with that, this leafy structure, which is just below the stomach, is going to give the pancreatic juice. Pancreas are responsible for the digestion of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. The juice that is secreted by the pancreas goes into the small intestine again with the help of a pancreatic duct. So, in all, what was, let's recap, the food was coming from the buccal cavity through esophagus into the stomach, mechanical churning, mechanical breakdown of the food that is churning and the mechanical breakdown of the food that is digestion of protein is taking place over here. Then the food goes into the small intestine where the bile is secreted by the liver which is stored in gallbladder comes into the duodenum or the small intestine helps in the digestion of fats. Along with that the pancreatic juice is secreted into the duodenum which is going to change the complex carbohydrates, fats and proteins into simpler parts. This is how our gut looks like. The alimentary canal right from our buccal cavity, the salivary glands here and this the esophagus, stomach, then this is the U-shaped structure where liver and pancreas are attached to the small intestine. This whole is small intestine. Then the small intestine enters into the large intestine. Then we have a rectum here and then anus. So if again we look into this, you will be able to visualize this whole thing goes into the small intestine here. The Absorption and digestion over take, takes place over here, then from here the absorption and then the food enters into the large intestine, goes through this and again absorption of water and salt take place here. Here the absorption, the small intestine, the absorption of food and water takes place whereas in the large intestine the absorption of water and salt takes place. So we had talked about ingestion. We have talked about digestion. Digestion took place in the stomach. It started out, out in mouth, buccal cavity, then it took place in the stomach, then in the small intestine. Digestion of all three main components, that is carbohydrates, proteins and fats, took place. Carbohydrates changed to glucose, proteins changed to amino acid and fats changed to fatty acids and glycerols. After that, absorption. We talk about absorption. Absorption has started in small intestine. An absorption of glucose, that is the simpler form of carbohydrate. Amino acid, that is the simpler form of protein. Fatty acid and glycerol, that is the simpler form of fats, is taking place in small intestine. Let's talk further.
This structure is actually the microscopic view of small intestine. You see these finger-like projections, these are called villi. Villi is responsible for the absorption of the simpler forms of food that are formed in the small intestine. After absorption, the food is then passed on to the large intestine. The large intestine you see is the movement is shown over here. The, what is the main function of large intestine? It helps in the absorption of water and some salts which are required by body again. What is the difference then in large and small intestine? Small intestine is longer in length but smaller in width whereas the large intestine is shorter but broader. It is in between, the small intestine is between the stomach and large intestine whereas large intestine is a part of the digestive system and comes after the small intestine. The role of small intestine is digestion and absorption both, whereas the large intestine helps in reabsorption of food and elimination of the uh, waste. Small intestine absorbs carbohydrates, proteins, fats, minerals, vitamins, whereas large intestine is responsible for the absorption of water, nutrients and some salts. The three parts of small intestines are duodenum, geogenum and ileum. And the large intestine has four parts, that is cecum, colon, rectum and anal canal. So, after absorption, let's, let me explain. We had gone to digestive system, absorption started in small intestine. The absorption is taking the simpler forms of the food to this red tube which, we, which I am representing as circulatory system. The food, the smaller components of the food have gone to the blood. The blood is going to take it to the body cells where the assimilation will take place. Now, let's talk about assimilation. See, this is small intestine, digestion of macromolecules or the big molecules by pancreas and other parts had taken place. The enzymes helped it to break down into smaller components which were absorbable. The absorbable component goes into the blood system and transported to different parts of the cell, different parts of the body in each and every cell. Here the assimilation will take place. Assimilation is, the, is in two ways, like one is if glucose is there and you need energy, it will be respired to produce energy and carbon dioxide. The other way of assimilation is that the simpler forms of the food that have come into the cells will again change to complex forms. This is like if amino acids are there, amino acids will unite to form proteins. You know each and every muscle that we have in our body is made up of proteins. So how the muscles are being formed? It is because of the assimilation that takes place after the body receives uh, the simpler form of the food. It is again complexified and changed into required food component. Last, ingestion. This is the removal of the food material which was not at all absorbed and utilized by the body, stored here in rectum and then passed out of the in us. Thanks for watching the videos, uh, the video, and do let me know in comments what all topics you want me to take over. Thank you.